Hi everyone, my name is Chinda, and I'm presenting my final year project titled Service Mesh, Enhancing the Resiliency, Security, Observability, and Availability of the live stream ESR Cloud Deployment. I'll first give a brief overview of the project, followed by analysis of the existing situation and the design of solutions, then followed by the implemented solutions, and finally experiments and results. This final year project aims to improve the existing automated speech recognition, or ASI in short, in various aspects. The ASI application is developed by the Speech Labs team based on Cloudy, an open source toolkit used for speech recognition. The system accepts input via either an audio file or a live audio stream and transcribes it to produce a transcript of the audio in the respective languages that it can detect. This is relevant for use cases like transcribing audio files for documentation and future references, and enabling communication for hearing and bad people, as well as subtitling of media in a multilingual society like Singapore, where multiple languages are often used together in the same sentence. The ASI application, which comprises of the master and worker services, has been packaged into a Docker image and deployed into the cloud for usage via Kubernetes, which is an open source container orchestration tool. Deploying an application as, as a microservices architecture has its benefits, but growing them to scale has its challenges that can be difficult to handle. These challenges should be explained in depth later. This project is important to bridge the existing gaps in the ASR microservices architecture in terms of resiliency, availability, observability, and security. The goals of the projects are broken down as below. Firstly, to improve ASR's resiliency to failure by utilizing traffic management strategies like circuit breakers to prevent cascading failure and configuring chaos engineering via fault injection to discover faults pre-mortem. Next, to enhance ESR's availability and reduce downtime by adopting smart deployment strategies like canary deployments and dark release. In addition, to increase the robustness of the security of service-to-service -service communication within the Kubernetes cluster via mutual TLS encryption. And finally, to boost the observability level in the ASR system via mesh collector, matrix, and logs. Before proceeding further, what are microservices and why are they used? To understand this, we have to briefly go through the history of software development. Traditionally, applications have been developed using a monolith approach. Everything is developed, deployed, and scaled as a single unit. While this approach provides easier development due to the simplicity of a single unit of application, development speed can go down across bigger team as teams must be extra careful not to affect each other's work since each component is tightly coupled with others. Besides, the release process takes a longer amount of time since the entire application must be built and deployed for every change. For example, in a shopping application, business logic will comprise of card, payment, authentication and notification, and more. On the other hand, the existing ESR adopts a microservices architecture. Each microservice handles a dedicated function inside a large scale application. These microservices are loosely coupled and deployed onto the client's complex infrastructure. This architecture makes each service easy to reason about in the context of the entire application. Microservices communicate with each other via well-defined interfaces with small surface areas, which limit the blast radius of failures and, de and defects. Compared to a monolithic architecture when an application is built as a single unified unit, this kind of architecture provides organization with more flexibility to, de to design, deploy, and scale independently, and thus it can have a significant impact on development speed, as well as the efficacy of agile working. For example, in the same shopping application, the services are split separately into cutting, payment, authentication, notification, and more. This figure shows the ASR's microservices architecture made out of two services, the master and the worker services. The master service dedicated to do the following tasks. Firstly, to handle requests from clients and next to manage the state of worker services. That is allocating more workers when there are not enough workers for transcription and vice versa. And for the worker service, it is dedicated to handle the following areas. To fetch the wired speech recognition model for audio transcription, and to transcribe the receive audio to text. In the context of the ASR, it is typically deployed in the customer's infrastructure, 
which can be a microservice of a much greater scale. So this figure shows how it looks like, an example of how the AS are deployed together with the customer's main microservice architecture. With a classic microservices architecture that the ASA adopts, there are challenges to be handled that comes with managing the application are at scale. The problems are as such. Firstly, achieving an optimal level of observability is harder when compared with monolith application as a single request is spent across multiple services. Any service within the architecture could cause problems of latency, errors, and failures. Next, with the distributed nature of a microservices architecture, there could be a misbehaving service causing major cascading failures in other services. It is essential that such faults are caught to prevent the entire system from malfunctioning, and such failures should ideally be identified pre-mortem rather than post-mortem. Furthermore, there are additional security requirements that come with microservices as compared to monoliths, since there are a greater number of communications between different services. Traditionally, security has been implemented only on the boundary of the cluster that the microservices are in to prevent unauthorized access. There is, however, a significant security threat with this that is exposed when the parameters breach and any services inside the cluster can be accessed easily. Typically, it is tedious and complicated to manage data encryption with services, and adopting a microservices architecture who further make this more challenging as it is harder to scale on an increasing number of services. Lastly, with multiple microservices making up the system, there is high complexity in managing the deployment of each component. A careless deployment of a particular microservice due to release of a risky experimental feature can cause significant downtime to users and can result in a poor user experience. Moving the implementation, the Istio service mesh is used as the main uh, service, service implementation. The Istio service mesh sits above the application level and it provides traffic and security code changes with enable invasion to application code. As seen in this figure, Istio is drive, driven by two main modules, the data plane and the control plane. The data plane orchestrates the communication between services by injecting a sidecar proxy into each service which simply intercepts all incoming and outcoming traffic for a service. The control plane, on the other hand, is the core service that drives the service mesh. It controls the state of all the sidecar proxies present in the service mesh, enables service discovery, and serves as a certificate authority to enable encrypted com communication between services. Firstly, the broad ability, the still service mesh allow for visualization of the mesh topology via mesh collected logs enabling users to quickly evaluate the health of their microservices architecture. This figure shows an example of such visualization of the AS application. In this instance, the request lifecycle from the worker port to the master port of a risky version is encountering failures for 79% of the request. Next, to so enhance resiliency to failures, it still provides the circuit breaker tool, which is simply a proxy tool that controls the flow to an endpoint and it stops traffic to downstream services when a service is failing. This helps prevent cascading failure and result in and resulting in the entire AS application to become sluggish in performance. In addition, chaos engineering is an important concept to discover faults in a system pre-mortem rather than post-mortem, enabling bugs to be caught early and fast. Istio provides customization options for chaos engineering via fault injection, where not only errors can be injected into the system, options like percentage and delay handlings can be configured as well. Besides, to increase the robustness of the security, Istio enables a zero trust environment within the cluster, where the typical assumption that anything within the cluster's security parameter does not hold anymore. It still certificate authority allows for mutual transport layer security or MTLS in short, encryption for service to service communication. Each service in the Istio service mesh owns a TLS certificate each issued by the Istio certificate authority. And for a given connection, the envoy proxy belonging to the client service will present its certificate to the target server, which has its own envoy proxy to verify the client certificate. Finally, to increase availability of microservices, 
when releasing new versions of market services to the staging or production environment, there's a significant risk of breaking user traffic when, such, when some features are not tested properly. Istio provides the canary deployment tool where the goal is to solve this use case by decreasing such a risk through rolling new features gradually into a small subset of users before making them available to anyone. In addition, there's a useful concept that makes use of the same principles behind traffic management and is still called duck launches. Duck launches facilitate continuous delivery by deploying features that are limited in access only to a group of users. Typically, developers and testers belong to this group using duck launches to test new features in production environment without having uh, to break production traffic. Finally, we'll move on to experiments and results. An experiment was carried out to verify whether the latency brought about by the sidecar proxies in each Kubernetes port is significantly affecting the overall application performance. This experiment was carried out by sending a typical client request to the application in two different settings. Specifically, it was a default setting without Istio service mesh against a Istio mesh enabled Kubernetes cluster. The variables, the variables kept constant across both settings are the infrastructure resources allocated and the audio file use of transcription. Three Kubernetes worker nodes of four virtual cores, 14 gig of memory, and 200 gig of storage each are used to simulate the performance of a production scale Istio mesh enabled Kubernetes cluster. The table here shows the results. Load testing was carried out by increasing the number of concurrent audio transcription requests sent. And for each run, the total time taken for audio transcription to complete was measured. As observed here, the latency increased gradually with higher load. The main reason behind the increased latency with the Istio service mesh is that Istio injects an envoy sidecar proxy for each Kubernetes port, which every request must now go through. While there's a small latency increase, they can be, they can be insignificant compared to the total time taken for the processing of the audio transcription. These results can be verified by the official Istio team to conduct their own performance testing for every version of Istio that they release. This is in line with the Istio team's goal of providing service mesh benefits to users while not sacrificing latency. Therefore, setting up the Istio service mesh to enhance the existing ASR application would be a feasible solution as the application's requirement of low latency and fast response times would not be affected. With that, I've come to the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening.